Hidden History is brought to you by G2A.com and our supporters at Patreon. Since its release in May, Blizzard's Overwatch has managed to get glowing reviews, massive sales and millions of hardcore fans worldwide. It seems like everyone from critics to porn abusers cannot get enough of this game making it the latest in Blizzard's long line of successes. Surprisingly though, things didn't always look like they were going to turn out that well. In fact, in many ways the Overwatch gamers know today was built on the ashes of one of Blizzard's biggest failures, Project Titan, originally meant to be the first completely new IP in over 15 years. The initial idea for Project Titan was to create a new superhero themed MMO, similar to games like City of Heroes and Champions Online, and featuring factions similar to the Alliance and Horde in the Warcraft franchise. But with one big twist, players would have to alternate between being an ass kicking hero and working their alter ego's regular day job. The concept was definitely ambitious, but there was one big problem. It wasn't fun to play, at all. According to Blizzard designer Jeff Kaplan, you had a really amazing group that was working on Titan. They were really talented individuals, but we failed horrifically in every way. In every way that a project can fail. It was devastating. It was kind of a crisis of confidence and identity, where you start to ask yourself, did we lose it? Are we not capable of making a great game anymore? Thankfully for Overwatch players everywhere, this failure is what inspired the great game we have today. As Kaplan added, when it came time to move to Overwatch, there was an extremely tight bond on the team and a ravenous hunger to show the world that we're not failures and we can make something really fun. Moving past the initial inspiration for the game, Overwatch's characters also get their names and in some cases personality from a lot of interesting sources. Take the western bounty hunter Jesse McCree, who shares his name with one of Blizzard's employees, also named Jesse McCree. The real McCree, now a lead game designer, has worked on Blizzard games ranging from the Diablo series to World of Warcraft, among many others. Genji, another popular character in the game, gets his name from a pretty unexpected place, classic Japanese literature, written by Murasaki Shikabu, a Japanese noblewoman in the early 11th century. The tale of Genji is regarded as a masterpiece by scholars, and many historians even call it the world's first modern novel. Overwatch's Genji and the book's Genji even have a lot in common, as both were known for living a decadent playboy lifestyle. No word on if the Genji in the book was actually a cyborg though. Genji isn't the only character to have roots in Japanese history either. Many fans have speculated that Hanzo's name may be taken from Hattori Hanzo, one of the most famous samurai of all time. Eventually known as one of Japan's most brilliant strategic minds, Hattori Hanzo began life as a fairly unimportant minor samurai before saving the life of shogun leader Tokugawa Ieyasu, who he then helped unite all of Japan under his rule. So it's safe to say he was a pretty big deal. In fact, Overwatch will only be the latest piece of media to reference Hanzo, considering there's characters that share his name in everything from Kill Bill to Pokemon Conquest to the manga series Path of the Assassin. He's even included as a great spy in the Civilization 4 expansion Beyond the Sword, as well as being a recurring character in the Samurai Shodown series. Jumping over to Farah, the Egyptian themed soldier started life as a very different kind of character. Well, actually she didn't begin as a character at all, just a set of gameplay mechanics that the Blizzard team wanted to include in the game. Eventually they sketched out a character named Rocket Dude, who unsurprisingly was a guy who ran around while strapped to a rocket. Thankfully the team decided that they could do better, going through a lot of concepts and finally settling on Farah. Speaking of Farah, her facial tattoo also happens to have roots in Egyptian culture, as it's a reference to the Eye of Horus, personified by the goddess Wajit. The Eye of Horus is an ancient religious symbol of protection and good health for the people of Egypt. Very appropriate considering Farah's altruism and dedication to the protection of the innocent. In the game, Alexandra Zaryanova, or just Zarya, is one of the world's strongest women and a devastating opponent. But the character also has a distinction of being the only Overwatch hero modelled directly after a real person. That's because Zarya bears an obvious resemblance to Tamara Bakhlesheva, one of Diablo 3's character designers. Making this connection even stronger is the fact that, like Zarya, Tamara was born in Russia. No comment showcase this week, but be sure to like, subscribe and also comment. And if we like your comment enough, we'll be sure to include it on a future Overwatch episode.
And now it's time for some trivia. Last week we asked you who the goddess of beauty was in High Rock's Brittany Pantheon, and the answer was D. Debella. This week's question is all about one of Overwatch's most well-known characters. What was the name of Lucio's debut album? Was it A. Sonic Boom B. Synesthesia Auditiva C. Casadora di Vampiros or D. Watch the Frozen Throne Tell me your answer in the comments section below and while you're down there you could start a few arguments by saying what the best character in your opinion in Overwatch is and why. I look forward to your best answers and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Hidden History. See ya!